morning, good morning everyone. Welcome to Treyer Wilderness. I'm Tammy Treyer and I'm excited to be able to share some great things with you guys today. We have been crazy, crazy busy and I'm a little early this morning. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> things, uh, things have just been wild and wooly here trying to sell our home and uh, we're still progressing on things. I have some neat things to show you today as far as what the mountain man has been up to. But um, it's a gorgeous day here in northern Idaho. We have been so blessed by wonderful weather. It's supposed to get pretty hot next week, but I, as you can see, I'm wearing a sweater. So, uh, and actually we're going to go outside today because it is just gorgeous, but I want to show you around in here. I can see some of you joining me. For those of you that are new to our channel and um, to Treyer Wilderness, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho, and we enjoy sharing um, our faith-led lifestyle, uh, our wilderness survival skills, bushcrafting, and everything we do here on our homestead to help others get prepared and uh, to live a full life and to live life by our terms, which I think is the most important, which is some of what we are going to touch on today as well. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I have some good things to share with you guys. I am going to spin this around here and show you what the mountain man has been up to. It's a little dark. It looks dark. Let me move a little forward here. Um, I can also turn the lights on. Let me just... Flip the switch here. There we go. That might brighten it up a little bit. Good morning, good morning. The mountain man has been slowly working on... Good morning, Miss Copper. She has to get in the scene, too. She's as big as the stonework there. But um, he's been busy um, tapping away and chipping away at the things that still need to get done here. As you can see around the window over here, it still needs its trim, and the window needs trimmed out. But we're progressing slowly on things. Um, he and the mountain boy are working right now, thankfully not far from home. So it makes it nice when they're done at the end of the day that he'll come and tinker here. So um, this is what he was working on um, when we had rain uh, this week. And it turned out awesome, and I have to share this with you. Good morning, Charles. I just saw your heart go up there. I didn't see you join me, but um, there you are. Good morning, Charles. <laughs> Right here, as you can see, now what's a little funny story there, I asked him if that was an accident, and he said no, it wasn't an accident, it wasn't quite the perfect heart, he did a little chipping away here, but what's really funny is he didn't notice this. Right here is a double heart, and there's a second one behind it, and that was an accident, that was, that was just... God, but that was my man, and for that I'm very grateful. He loves doing stuff like that for me, and leave a little bit of my, my hearts behind, so I'm excited about that. That is corrugated tin or steel. The realtor suggested it. Um, we would have liked to put something a little more rustic in there. Honestly, we would love to do the stone all the way up. The stone was gifted to us, and we didn't have enough to do the whole area. Um, so he went up to the chair rail, and look at that. I mean, look how crazy that is, uh, that it lined up just perfectly. I mean, perfectly with the chair rail that's in place. So, uh, my man, I'm just so gifted and so blessed by his talents. Um, but that looks amazing. I love the stone. The stone also looks uh, very close to what we were used to growing up back east. Uh, so it's just really pretty. This, it would have been nice to have something a little more rustic. You can get like rusted tin. The difference in price would have been like $82 for the cost of this versus $282. So obviously that was not an option for us. But this works, and I know that when we put the stove pipe back in there, the black stove pipe, that's going to really make it pop. And what's really cool is, you know, we, we put it in yesterday, and we were like, oh, my goodness, just... It, it took a while for it to grow on us, but then at night, the lights were on, and it was kind of a neat glow and reflection off of that, and I can't imagine what that's going to be like when the wood stove's going, and what he did is 
he went ahead and put that over here instead of the stone because we were thinking of the ability to clean, you know, with the grease from cooking. Um, it really can be a bear to clean stuff and your back splashes. So we chose to put that in place. It's not finished. It's just kind of stuck in there. And he'll do the sides all the way down. Um, so I think that looks really nice. And the other nice thing that that did is when you turn the light on here, it really brightens that up. So, uh, you know, a great way to reflect, to do reflective lighting um, in an off-grid home. There you go. That's a really good option. So, good morning, Miss Shelley. So, I thought I would share that with you. I'm going to shut the lights off because it keeps going from sunny to uh, cloudy. But I'm going to grab my stuff. We are actually going to go outside because it is so, so nice out. And I think I'm going to take Mrs. Copperhead with me. Are you coming? Come on. I want to show you something else I've been up to. Okay, go ahead. There you go. She is fascinated by watching my little treats here, too. I decided to put my hummingbird feeders up, and I'm really glad I did. They have been so entertaining. Uh, we have between seven and nine different hummingbirds. You can see one right there on the, well, it was at the eaves. It's, it'll come over. You'll hear them. They make a lot of racket. There it was again. <laughs> But I have both the feeders out, and although we're, we're moving and we're packing things up, this was an extreme simple pleasure to me. I enjoy watching them. I enjoy seeing what kinds of different hummingbirds we have come in. The mountain man was actually standing right here last night with his hand, his finger on the feeder, and the one was feeding in another one of the holes. It didn't sit on his finger, but... Uh, that's what we're striving for. It's pretty cool. Just, they're unique. And I was out here earlier. They're trying, they're like, I want to come in. But um, they sit on the wash line. So you look out all day long and they're either at the feeder or they're on the wash line. And they, they're in the trees here too. And that's something that's really unique. Most people don't realize that there's hummingbirds sitting in the trees around you. There's one. But one thing you need to keep in mind also with hummingbirds is that they are extremely territorial and they will fight over the feeder. So this could be dangerous sitting out here with them. I was out earlier and they were kind of going around my head, but I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens, but they're, they're really buzzing around. So I'm going to spin this around. Mrs. Go lay down so I can get in here. Go on, go lay down. Go or lay down there, whatever, just pop out of the way. All right, bear with me a second here because I got to try to sit and get the camera situated. Okay, here we go. Hopefully this is not too bright. I just thought it's so nice out and I hate to be inside when it's nice, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to be out here. I almost dropped that. Okay, bear with me. I got to, there we go. Let's see if this will work. I think it's working. Okay, cool. <sighs> How are you guys? Share with me. What is new with you guys? What do you got going on on your homestead? Good morning, Miss Diana. Diana, you'll have to watch um, the, from the beginning then. I just did a, uh, I just shared the inside of the house and, and Glenn's handiwork. But how are you guys? What have you guys been up to? Uh, what is it like at your home? Many of you have children home. Uh, for the summer, so it's a little chaotic and crazy, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to real quick share this while you guys share with me what's going on with you guys. It is crazy. We all have craziness going on in our lives. I know it. I hear it. I see it. And we're going to talk about some of that today. All right. Bear with me one second. I'm trying to share and it won't let me. Of course it won't. I am drinking my lemonade today. There is nothing better to me than some really good fresh squeezed lemonade in the summertime. And it's important to stay hydrated, so make sure you guys are staying hydrated. It's easy not to be, especially with many of you living in extremely humid circumstances right now. I hear that from quite a few of my friends um, who live in different places. Michigan is extremely humid this morning. And I know the southern states are also quite humid and hot. Like I said, we've been blessed. I'm sitting out in the sun in a sweater. 
that's that's fortunate and the guys are doing concrete today so that makes it so much nicer I am grateful for them but they think I'm nuts they come back in and you know they've been working even if it is like this they're still hot and sweated and I'm like a popsicle my lips are blue my hands are freezing something wrong with me but that we've established a long time ago right <laughs> all right so I just shared that with somebody okay I don't know if you guys can hear them buzzing. They make, I put the feeders out and the mountain man stopped by the door. He's like, what am I hearing? I'm like, it's the hummingbirds. And what's cool is they come back every year. They were looking for my feeders. That's what prompted me to put that up. This is going to be interesting. My seat's too far back to, uh, there we go. Diana says, I just walked back in from faxing a resume to a friend's chiropractor. Her description of him is you would love him. He is an old country boy from Kentucky. His whole backyard is a garden of veggies and fruit and fruit trees. He raises German shepherds and loves guns, Christians and on the right side politically. There you go. You can't get any better than that. I will be praying for you on that. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love the description too. Uh, Shelly says, and it's not letting me click that little see more button. Come on. Let me try again. All right. Shelly says, groceries done, picked raspberries, and got some eggs from the, the neighbor so far this morning. I am enjoying peppermint tea. Nice. I can't see the rest of it at the moment because it's at the bottom of the screen and it doesn't always let me hit the see more button crazy thing I'll look at it then but that's awesome relaxing you guys sound Shelly sounds like she's gotten all her stuff done but she's relaxing with a cup of tea I hope when you guys join me you're able to just sit back kick back and relax a little bit that's the key thing where it's like you're at my table with me this is what it's all about and hopefully I don't lose an eye I'm making sure my glasses stay secure today so that I don't lose an eye with these hummingbirds <laughs> I have to share with you guys Wednesday we had our showing and it was extremely promising. Um, it was a old, much older couple. They came, and I was a little surprised at that, and then I learned that they were here looking for his sister. Um, they had recently moved up from New Mexico, and his sister is moving up from Arizona. Um, they want to move quickly, so um, she recruited him to look around the area for properties. And he has built several homes of his own. Um, and as uh, Diana had just shared in her descriptive of the place that she put her resume into, um, this was an, an old cowboy. And I could just see my man glowing. Um, my man was a professional bull rider for 11 years. He worked on ranches. He guided. He did pack trips. So it's part of his makeup. And I could just see the amazing initial connection that he had and they ended up being here from like 9.30 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon so it was really good that I did postpone and, and reschedule things for us um, but it was a really nice thing not only did we meet people that were really true kindred spirits but we also um, have somebody that's really interested in our home so in two weeks we will be showing it to his sister so keep us in your prayers I'm, I'm really you know I'm at great peace with all of this because I know that um, God has a plan and as we are progressing we are getting greater peace we are getting more comfort and we are realizing um, what it is that we want to do moving forward and God's kind of giving us more direction there this is really funny they're like hovering over me there were four of them right there I mean they're gonna get pooped on or get my eye poked out <laughs> anyway all right we're gonna let me see if I can see the rest of Shelly's now. It moved up. Crazy Seymour button will not let me hit it. Okay. Um, Tammy says, what are the gardens and school almost done? Going to make bread and clean. Oh, I'm glad you said about the bread. How many of you love really good seedy bread? Um, some of you might be familiar with Mike's um, crazy killer bread. I don't know if that's a western, a, a, a Pacific Northwest bread or if that's something that's all over the country but when we are out in the big city I'm able to afford it it's between like four and five dollars a loaf out there in our town it's five or six dollars and I just can't justify that so I actually made my own the other day and the recipe is coming it turned out fabulous and I, I love a good seedy bread I put um, 
hemp seeds in there and sunflower seeds, chia seeds. I'm trying to think what else I put in there. But it was, it was really awesome. So I'm going to be sharing that recipe on the blog later today, hopefully. Good morning, David. Good morning, Sherry. Glad to have you guys joining me. Uh, so, you know, things are progressing, and um, I am going to definitely share that recipe with you guys. And another thing that you can do is make your own homemade um, hummingbird juice. And it's really easy to do. You just put um, two cups of water in a saucepan and a half a cup of sugar. I use organic sugar even for my little pets. <laughs> um, but you just put it on the stove, heat it up, and let that sugar dissolve, and then let it cool off. I do add red food coloring. That's the only thing I put food coloring in. Um, but I put that in there so that it attracts them. And as you can see, it's certainly doing the job. Um, I don't know if you guys can see them. You can probably hear them, but they are buzzing around. There's one sitting on the wash line that just buzzed me. Yes, I can see them flying behind me. Um, so it's real easy, and it's very inexpensive to make, and it's I prefer that over going to the store and buying stuff. There's not too much that we go out and buy if I can make it myself. So just another tip for you guys for today. But... Um, it's just crazy in life how life takes over. Um, we have so many things that take over our days and consume our days. My battery is dying on my iPad, so I want to plug it in. Um, I want to mention early on in our in our cast today that we have a lot of prayer requests going on right now, and. Um, if you're prayerful, uh, we would love to have you uh, lifting up these people. Um, there's some big things I want to call out today. Uh, you can see and hear them. They're really crazy. The dogs are just fascinated by them. I think the healer was sitting inside the screen last night thankful that he was away from the big mosquitoes because they look like big, big mosquitoes. So, to him anyway. While I am going through our prayer list, I went for a walk yesterday. I decided I was being well I go for a walk every day but I was I was being good to myself I was doing something out of the norm I went for a good hike and I was I went off the trail took the dogs in and the grass ended up being taller you know it was up to my chest so I, I was losing the dogs in it um, the, the healer is the one that concerns me because he's partially blind partially deaf um, the only thing you can hear is me clapping. I think I've shared that with you guys before, that the only thing he hears is a clap. You can't use the high-pitched dog whistles anymore. So my hands, I came back and my hands were like bloody stumps because I lost him. And I was clapping like a fiend trying to find him. And here, picture this. A couple weeks ago, I was out with the mountain boy and two women came in with their horses and they had a bunch of dogs. Of course, so my first reaction is to stand there and clap at my dog not even thinking what kind of a lunatic I look like in the middle of the wilderness, standing there clapping my hands and saying hello to these people. They have no idea why I'm clapping, right? <laughs> Can you picture the scene? It was quite something. But anyway, yesterday I was coming back to get the four-wheeler, figuring I'd be out for the rest of the afternoon looking for this dog because I headed into the woods planning to go scouring for winter kills and different things and just exploring. I love doing that, and I don't do that enough. And, uh, of course, I lost him. You know, he gets, he just gets the sniffing stuff. Well, he couldn't find me either, so thankfully he just came home and he was at the back door. But it's important to get out. It's important to have adventures, and there's many reasons for that. There's uh, a total level of distressing. There's a total level of renewal. I don't know about you guys, but for me, sitting out here, and even just coming out here, even for 15 minutes, and just taking in the air and my, and my scenery, is renewing in such a great way and right now I think is our craziest time of the year for everybody you know like I said many people have kids home um, in addition to kids being home um, there's summer chores of gardening and all kinds of things vacations and and parties and picnics and um, all that stuff to me just thinking about it stresses me out I'm so used to my relaxed home um, so even on Wednesday after our gathering with those folks, it was so enjoyable, but we were both taxed when we were done because we're not used to communicating with people for that long of a period of time. So there's lots of things that add stress to our lives and lots of things that keep us from enjoying some of the best things in our lives. And one of the things, like I talked about last week, 
abundance, clutter, and fear do that on a daily basis. And I, I cannot ever express in words the feeling that I felt when we moved from the tent into the house and all of our belongings came, came in um, that were in storage. It was so overwhelming and consuming and looking back on that now, I wish I would have just taken them back to the storage unit <laughs> or sold them then. Um, because, you know, we move on with life and we continue on and we keep trying to exist. Whoa. <laughs> that was kind of close. That one right between you and me and the camera. Woo. Um, but we, we try to keep trudging on, but sometimes we don't fix the things that are broken. And we keep trudging on trying to um, make life better, but we can't until we get past certain things. One of which is clutter and abundance. And um, I can't express that enough to take the time slowly, because it is a slow process. Um, in some cases, it is a... Um, a loss for some people to go through that and to get rid of things. For me, I was celebrating that, and I know that you will too once you start the process. And if you missed out on last week's video, be sure to watch that. Um, there was a lot of good information there and a lot of good encouragement. Um, this week we're going to talk about a little bit something different, but it's it's along the same lines. It's baggage. And um, if you if you have a hard time watching these on Facebook, I do feed these live videos onto our YouTube channel. So you can find those by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube. Um, do I have my iPad sitting in the sun? It's going to start shutting down because it's getting too hot. But before we delve into today's topic, I want to touch base on our prayer list because it's huge and there are some really wild and crazy things going on for some people. Um, things that I can't imagine. Ah, I'm trying to bring my sweater over here to cover my iPad. Um, Pat Kenny started his chemo um, this week. He had to go through um, a, a blood transfusion. He needed to get two pints of blood. He gets very anemic and he's been losing blood for some time now. It's been a common occurrence for him um, as a result of the chemo. He also has congestive heart failure as a result of the chemo. But he is trying a new protocol that should be uh, less harsh on his heart. So just please keep him in your prayers. He's like a father figure to me. He is such a neat individual and such a blessing in our lives. So keep him in your prayers. And as I mentioned last week, his son-in-law, Mark, um, has the same cancer. They just found that out. I believe he is 54. And uh, <clears throat> what sent him into the hospital and what found how they located this for him was uh, such extreme pain in his spine. <clears throat> his spine actually broke uh, because it's so brittle uh, because of the cancer. So they uh, removed a tumor uh, this past week and then they did another surgery um, where they went in through his chest and actually put cages around his spine. Now the initial concern was that his uh, spinal cord uh, was going to have issues, that there could have been paralysis, and God answered prayer there. His spinal cord was long enough and, and had plenty of room that there was no paralysis of any kind. Although when they put the cages in, um, his spine is so brittle they didn't have good places to secure. It, uh, the, the screws weren't able to be secured to their liking. So they're not sure how this is going to go. It's touch and go. Um, but he's very optimistic. He's got a great sense of humor and he's got a great support unit, including us as prayer warriors for him. So please keep praying for him on this journey. Um, his name is Mark and uh, just pray for he and his two sons and his wife. Uh, he did get to go home. They were going to be moving him to a rehabilitation center and somehow by the grace of God, um, he was able to go home and get home care and his family uh, took the efforts and rearranged the home so that everything is on the first floor, everything is accessible to him. He only has to uh, do two stairs from the garage into the home. So what a blessing, you know, we all know what it's like being in the care of our health care system and we, they are a blessing but at the same time sometimes it can be a curse as far as the care that's offered. Um, not everybody is like Miss Shelley, who's on here, uh, who cares for uh, individuals. So it's, it's always a concern when you have your loved ones 
in the care of others. Um, so just keep them in your prayers. He's got a long road ahead of him there. Um, he's got to heal from this and then he will be starting chemo and radiation. So keep them in your prayers. Um, Candy and Steve Hill have also been in the, he's been in the hospital for a long period of time. He had an infection and um, very bad infection and it was all very touch and go. Uh, so just keep them in your prayers as well as well as Roger Veal and his wife Wendy. Roger went through incredible surgery a couple weeks back. This is insane. It's even hard to just fathom. They removed his hip. Um, he had such bad infection and the, they couldn't get it to, they couldn't stop it so they removed it and they removed his hip. So he is um, in the hospital. They moved him to the hospital. He was going back and forth to get um, antibiotic IV um, extreme doses, the highest dose any, but any human could take um, to help fight this infection and heal his body so they can replace his hip. Just crazy. I mean, it is amazing what our medical system can do and, and the advances in medicine. Don't get me wrong. I know I talk negatively about our, our medical system. There are flaws in it, but there are also such amazing advances in it. So um, just keep those people in your prayers. And uh, also, uh, Carrie Ames and uh, uh, Melanie are part of our uh, audience, as well as Terry and June and uh, Mona and Ken. And uh, you can read over the list. Those were the most critical ones that I really, really wanted to point out. Um, I would like to ask that you uh, pray for Shelly and her family and her daughter, Sarah. And also Tammy and her family and Diana and her husband Craig, um, especially with Diana and this job. Diana, that sounds fabulous. That would be so awesome if that is where you, where God has you landing. Um, also, I'd like to ask you to pray for Jamie and her family from An American Homestead. Some of you may follow them on YouTube, um, and I believe they're on other social media. They're also on Patreon. Uh, but she had uh, cancer, I believe, in her throat and in her chin. So she is, she is a warrior. She is going through some pretty crazy, crazy stuff, and they're doing all kinds of interesting treatments. Um, really neat family, uh, and would just like to ask you to keep them in your prayers also. Um, but the list is below. Just please, um, if you remember to even just pray for them as a whole. Um, the power of prayer is amazing. I sit in an amazing seat. Um, doing these live videos and running our community, you know, I'm the vessel God is using, but you guys are such amazing parts of this. It's so awesome to be able to have people request prayers like you guys do and to see these prayers being answered and God's miracles being worked is just, it's incredible. It is incredible. So. You know, keep the prayer requests coming. Don't ever hesitate to ask for prayer. You can list them in the comments below. You can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. Personal message me, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but it's just amazing. We have a very awesome, loving community here that looks out for each other, loves on one another. You know, I'm just so grateful when I see the dynamics of other communities and just how people can be. So, um, I thank you guys because this is this is very fulfilling to me and just such a joy to do this every week and just to be be a part of this. So we're gonna move on and today's topic I want to talk about is you know is is our past keeping us from enjoying today and our future? For many people, that is a big big yes. For some of us, we are muddling through and fighting through that and learning to heal from um, our past. We all have a story. It's a given. We all have a story. Some really extreme, some mild, some, some just light. But you know what? It's a story and it's pain. And pain is hard to get past. And pain and bitterness and anger and resentfulness and unforgiveness can be one of the biggest forms of bondage we can put ourselves in. 
And I say put ourselves in because we have the choice to move on from our past. Although our past could be very difficult and very consuming and have left many scars, I have many. I've experienced a lot of things. I know people have experienced a lot worse. But the one thing that we are all given is the gift of God's grace, the gift of forgiveness, and the gift of Him giving us the strength we need to move through our past struggles on a daily basis. Unfortunately, you know, the scars and the hurts from our past don't, they may never go away. But when you learn how to cope with them and how to um, redirect them and how to live today and for tomorrow instead of in yesterday, that is a huge, huge thing. And like I said, we have the gift of God, God's grace and his strength to help pull us through that. But that is something that we all suffer from and we all end up... Um, in our own bondage because we don't learn how to release those pains and I want to help you with that because I've had to learn to do that myself ah, myself it's not it's okay sorry that was me don't knock my camera over good morning miss Ashley let me see here Diana says it's getting brighter so it's getting harder to see <laughs> oh it doesn't always let me hit the see more button and that's very frustrating because you guys share such great stuff there, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, Diana says, the Lord is so very good. He has been so very gracious and gentle with me twice now. He has made sure I got into the van just in time to hear his encouragement through a song I had never heard before. Johnny Diaz, Let Faith Move You. Yes, check out the lyrics. Yes, that's actually in my inspirational playlist on Spotify. Say the things that are hard to say. Learn the life. Give yourself some grace. Once you get it, give it all away. Just let faith move you. Pack your bags and take a trip on a journey of no regrets. You can't start till you take a step. Just let faith move you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. There are so many great songs. And, you know, God speaks to us in such unique and individual ways. He will um, share words spoken by a friend. He will share a song. He will share a Bible verse. He will share a book. He will share people in our lives. And it's amazing. You know, if we keep our eyes open and we are focusing forward, God blesses us with the tools and the people we need to move forward. You know what, guys? I am going to take us inside because the sun is just blaring on my phone and I know that I'm going to end up losing it because it's getting too hot. So bear with me a second here. Come here, missus. Go that way. Oh, you're a big girl. Move that way so you can go in that way. <laughs> We've got a cluster. We've got a cluster. There we go. My big girl made it around the corner. Okay, here we go. In we go. Sorry for the distraction and the upheaval. I thought I'd keep us outside. That was nice for a while. But I'm cooking and I can feel my machines cooking. Move, missus. Move, move, move. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, back inside. Let me just get situated. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we'll turn on some lights here so we have... There we go. Okay. And then Ashley said something too. I want to see what Ashley had to say. But isn't God amazing? How many of you can, give me some hearts here. How many of you can praise God for directions he's led you and things he's led you to and people and things and stuff? It's just amazing. And I just, uh, that is the highlight of my life. That is one of my greatest blessings and just one of my greatest joys. You know, just how God works in our lives. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Love it. Yes, there's so much. And, and God is present all the time. And you know what? In our community, we tend to... I'm trying to see more on here. We, we have such an awesome community of people. And you guys don't realize how often the things you share are touching other people. Um, just Diana's words right now. You know, those are powerful words. Those are powerful um, lyrics. And... People don't realize that there's good, wholesome stuff out there for us to listen to and to put ourselves into different places. I'm going to try to see if by chance I can see all the comments in here. Hang on, i got to turn me down. 
Okay, so let's see. If I can get into the comments, here we go. Fighting with me, of course it is. I wanted to see what Ashley had to say. All right, let's see if I can try one more time. She says, hello, my friend. I'm, I'm finally listening without my hands in the dirt so I can type hello today. Awesome. I've seen all of the things you have been foraging and doing. That's so awesome. I, I live vicariously through you, sweet friend, because I am not able to get into the dirt right now. So I am so grateful. Ah, here we go. I can see the... Okay. And she said, I hope... hope all is well or you are well. Yes, I am well. I am well. God is blessing me with a great peace in everything that is happening in our lives and just fully trusting God for the outcome. Um, Miss Ashley does all kinds of very unique things um, in her. A Ashley is, struggles like I was um, and has many debilitating days, but the things that she accomplishes and the things that she is drawn to, that's another act of God, just in how she is healing and what God is using to heal her. So, just amazing, and I'm glad you're here, girl. <laughs> okay, Shelly says, oh, the Seymour button is gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> after I got divorced and after years of self-healing, when I chose to have a man in my life, I made a list of what I wanted. Let me see if I can see the rest of that. What I wanted in a man. I got exactly what I listed. God is good. You know what? So did I. It's really funny. Um, my girlfriends kept telling me that um, you know, I was ready to grow old by myself. Actually, Shelly and I had a conversation about this recently. Um, you know, My uh, husband of 10 years had... Uh, a two-year affair with somebody at work that I had no idea about and it just ripped the rug out from under me. He left leaving me with two kids and it was, I was devastated at first. I realized later what a blessing it was. Um, but I was, I was determined to grow old by myself. I was just done and my friends kept saying you're too young to grow old by yourself and so I said my cr criteria was that a cowboy needed to walk up onto my porch wearing his cowboy boots and his wranglers, say yes ma'am, um, and uh, somebody that I could truly be myself with and, 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 sh and just li allow me to live with my faith on my sleeve. He showed up. He said yes ma'am when I asked if he wanted a glass of water and was wearing his cowboy boots and his wranglers and here we are today uh, nine years later and ten since we were dating and God is good God does answer prayer and God does love us and God does look out for us and although we've experienced things we have the choice to use those things as a crutch or as a stepping stone um, you know, we can choose to stay stuck in that baggage and in that hurt and in that resentment and whatever other negative emotions you experience, or we can choose to use that as a stepping stone to uh, know that we don't want that in our lives, that we want to um, project something different, and we also want to um, be a magnet for something different and the thing is sometimes the baggage that we get ourselves that we're stuck in and that we allow ourselves to be stuck in because we are stuck in it and we can't let it loose we are drawing more of that into our lives and that is a truth I did experience that for a long time um, and once I changed how I thought about life myself and everything I started to draw in so much more pleasantries and that's what we need to do is learn to release our baggage um, I've mentioned this book many times um, you can find it by going to treyorwilderness.com slash wronged many of us have things that we need to forgive and what we don't realize is that you know some of us don't want to forgive because then that'll be doing something nice for that person and that's where we're wrong 
the person we be doing something nice for is ourselves. We will be releasing ourselves from bondage by letting go and forgiving that person of whatever the wrong is. Um, I've talked about The Shack. You guys, some of you have watched the movie The Shack. He had to forgive an ultimate um, sin to him and his family. Um, somebody abducted his daughter and, and murdered her. But when you look at the reality of that, it's the same thing that God did for us. Um, so when we look at that and we think about that, you know, God, God forgave us all of our sins. God, God forgave us of our sins before we even existed and, and gave up his son for our sins. So we are commanded to forgive in the Bible so that he can forgive us because if we don't forgive, he's not going to forgive us. And that's important to know, and that's important to realize that by letting go of, of the bondage we're holding ourselves in by not forgiving, you know, there's been a lot of hurts. I hear so many hurts as I get to know people, and, and I've experienced a lot of hurts. And what's crazy is sometimes the, the, the same people that hurt us are people that are nearest and dearest to us, and sometimes we can't necessarily get away from them. And then there comes a point in our lives where we need to get away from them. I've expressed that with my family. Um, you know, in order for me to heal, I had to step away from my, my biological family. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it was the most amazing thing I've ever done for myself in removing the weights um, and, and the negativity from my life. Now, I'm not recommending that everybody walk away from those that are hurting you because there are ways that things can be fixed. And, and through prayer, God can fix things. Um, but sometimes we are stuck in situations where people aren't willing to um, help themselves. And sometimes we're around people that are bitter and angry and, and are toxic. So sometimes just limiting our, our connection with some people can be a great um, release of baggage and an aid in helping us move forward from the hurts that we um, have experienced. That being said, I'm gonna read a couple things to you guys. Um, we ha there's all kinds of different hurts and pains and you guys know what you have experienced and what you have walked through. Um, maybe you know people that are struggling. Um, the book Wronged is a great avenue and I encourage you to read it more than once. Um, what was unique in that book is when I read it the first time, I felt anger in some of those chapters. And, and that was a good thing actually because it, it made me realize that although I thought I had forgiven, I hadn't forgiven in some areas or I hadn't forgiven certain people, that those hurts were still real and although I thought I forgave, I didn't. So I had to process some more and work through some more of my hurts and to let them go. And, and then when I read it the second time and that didn't affect me anymore, that was a great sign. That's a great sign of growth and healing. And it is a process, guys. It is an extreme stream process to walk through our hurts and our past sometimes. The other thing that is really helpful in being able to walk through our path, our past, is to be able to, when those negative feelings surface, um, to give them a positive spin. And I know that can be extremely hard. Um, sometimes that might just be realizing the growth that you've had and how far you've come and, and seeing where you're at today that you've made it past that. That is a great way to do it. The other way is to, to either remember happy thoughts with that person. Um, you know, there may have been something uh, pleasant at some time with that particular person that caused you the hurt. And if you can focus on that, the other thing is just focusing on the fact that you've forgiven them, um, that it is your past and your future is going to be so much better without them in it. You know, and keep this in mind. 
a lot of people think that when you forgive somebody, that means that you need to forgive them and, and they still hold a place in your life and in your heart. And that's not always the case. Some of the things that we need to forgive may be brutal, maybe, maybe, um, an impossibility to have a relationship with that person any longer. So do remember that. Don't feel that you need to forgive somebody and still see them day to day. You can forgive somebody and not have that relationship any longer uh, because it's healthy for you to be in, in that, to have it that way. So keep that in mind. You know, some people are afraid to forgive because they feel that once they forgive, they have to, you know, that that means that person needs to be part of their lives. It doesn't mean that at all. Um, some things are very difficult and um, aren't meant uh, to be continued. But the best thing you can do in all of this is talk to God. Ask God for direction. Ask God for guidance. Ask God for what it is he wants you to do. And that can also be hard because he may guide you to reconciliation. And, and that may not be what you want, but God always knows best. And sometimes reconciliation can be um, the fruit to your future. So accepting his guidance and seeking his guidance is something that is very important. I'm going to read this to you. Um, you can overcome your past. Jephthah, a mighty man of valor, was the son of a harlot. That is in Judges 11.1. 1. Sociologists tell us that human behavior is largely determined by two things, our parents and our environment. Judging by that, they'd have written Jephthah off as a lost cause, but not God. His words say, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. That is so true, guys. That is so true. That is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Write that one down. When Jesus becomes Lord of your life, neither genes nor environment can prevent you from becoming everything he intends you to be. Remember that. Our, we are um, a byproduct of our childhood. But that doesn't mean our childhood has to um, dictate our adulthood nor the happiness in our lives. Before his life was over, Jephthah became famous as Israel's youngest governor and is listed among the Bible heroes in Hebrews chapter 11. That's because God is a turnaround specialist. Maybe you were born in less than ideal circumstances and you're wondering if you can ever overcome them. The answer is yes, and I'm gonna say absolutely. So the next time someone tries to use your past to put you down, remind them about Jephthah. The truth is, our God is awesome. He can lift the disadvantaged higher than those who have been ever possible. Ep he can lift the disadvantaged higher than those who have had every possible advantage. Sorry. His strength is revealed and released in our weakness. This is also true. You know, we might feel intimidated by our own weakness sometimes, but in our weak state, that's when God can build us up. Sometimes we need to be at rock bottom before we can come up and understand the benefits of God's beauty and, and his grace and, and his works in our lives. He specializes in using those who have been rejected. He used Joseph, a man thrown into a pit by his brothers and written off by his father as dead. He used David, a shepherd boy, alienated and ignored by his family. He used Jesus, the stone the builders rejected, who went on to become the chief cornerstone. And he can do the same for you. So be encouraged. God has a plan for your life, and as you spend time with him, he will show you what it is. So his strength is revealed and released in our weaknesses. And guys, I can't express that enough. If I, if I became what my childhood dictated I would become, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. And I praise God that even when I didn't have a close walk with him, he still led and guided me and used the Holy Spirit to prompt me to be bigger and better than my circumstances. And also, you know, I, I was always coined to be living life 
life through pink shady glasses. Praise God I was. Because through those pink shady glasses, I saw what was on the other side of my past. I love life despite my circumstances. I love life and I wanted more out of it. And so I sought after that. And I know that there are other people out there in this world that aren't as strong willed as I am. You know, that could have been my stubborn nature, but I'm grateful that I was enabled to do that walking through some of the hardest things that I have. Diana says, I can, I can certainly relate to that. Yeah, and we all have experienced hard. One of the best things that my office helper, Julie, had mentioned to me one time is that, you know, I used to get very frustrated when I was in a low place because I always felt guilty for being in that low place because I knew people that were dying of cancer and other things and their lives were so much worse and harder than mine and here I am, woe is me and me. And she said that I had to stop doing that and realize that my hurts were real and I needed to acknowledge those hurts, not stuff them. And you know what, it was the best advice she could have ever given me because it helped me to progress to where I am today. And in that I was, you know, I took strength in that place, knowing that, you know, what I was dealing with was real and it really did hurt. And regardless, you know, how minuscule I felt my hurts were, I needed to process those hurts. If we don't process our hurts and our past, we can stay in states of depression and self-hurt and we say such nasty things to ourselves. You know, we say worse things to ourselves than we'd ever say to anybody. And I, you hear me talk about that in past things that we need to learn to get past that and, and, and speak nicely to ourselves. You know, it's funny, you know, people think that when you talk to yourself, you're crazy, but in our heads, we do it every day. I do talk to myself out loud all the time too. And it's just, we all do it, right? I know we do. You can't say I'm the only crazy one out there. But in communicating with ourselves, we have the ability to build ourselves or break ourselves. And I want to remind you guys, you know, that we have power in our words. We have power in our actions. We have power within us through God to walk ourselves out of our past and into our futures starting today. And I know that many of us have dreams and desires and I see so often that our past is keeping us from facing our futures and we are missing out on the best parts of our life. And I don't want to see you guys do that. Um, it, it, does, it is a process, just like, just like decluttering your home. It is a slow process. They're, they're, they run very parallel because you are doing the same thing. You are decluttering your mind and your body. Our past can hold us hostage and, and it can cause sickness, it can cause um, health issues, it can cause all kinds of things. And we need to get out of our heads in a negative way and if we're gonna, and, and move forward in a positive way. And that includes, you know, talking nicely to ourselves. I wanna, I want to touch on something else today. You know, as a result of our um, holding ourselves bondage from our past, our, our past, when we are stuck in that place, can cause resentment, bitterness, all kinds of weird negativity. And it's because we aren't learning how to process and get out of that place. And as a result of that, we tend to do funny things. That negativity, even though we don't want it to, can feed forward into other things, which will also continue to hold us back. And this just happens to be one that popped up that I felt was worth sharing. Psalms 37, one through four. Oh, I'm, in, I'm thinking I'm in the app and I'm not, sorry. Um, let me just read that. <clears throat> I have a tip for you guys too, if you struggle reading the Bible. Start with the New Testament. The New Testament is just so awesome to read. I love, love, love reading the, the New Testament. Um, so much 
good in it and so many powerful words. Um, and then go back and read the Old Testament. The Old Testament can be very difficult to read because it has a lot of the lineages and um, it's a lot more doom and gloom. But there's so much growth in that area too. Um, but if you want to read the Bible, start in the New Testament. All right, Psalms 37, 1 through 4. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. That goes back to what Shelley said there. Psalms 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Ask and you shall receive. These are promises in the Bible, guys. So, you know, you should be really communing with God because he will help you greatly in transitioning from your past to your present. So, in reading that, this is called conquering jealousy. Envy can damage the life of a Christian a f and a, and a non-believer. A feeling of displeasure about someone else's good fortune can also harm a believer's witness, since it often causes people to act out of hostility and bitterness. And the jealous person suffers far more than his or her target, which is true. We live in a very bad place. Um, before he can rid, we can rid ourselves of envious feelings, we must be willing to confess we have them in our heart. Like greed, jealousy is an emotion we don't like to admit we feel, but the Lord already knows. We also must realize that harboring envy is the same as objecting to God's blessing upon someone else's life. That is powerful. I'm going to read that again. Like greed, jealousy is an emotion we don't like to admit we feel. But the Lord already knows. He also must real. We must realize that harboring envy is the same as objecting to God's blessing upon someone else's life, which means we would not be permitting that blessing, or we would wish not for that blessing on that person. That's foolishness. We need to realize how harsh these negative thoughts can be. Regardless of how we try to rationalize such feelings, we are in conflict with the Lord. A person cannot be simultaneously jealous and right with God. The surest way to strip away resentment is through prayer. And after we've confessed to the Lord that we have jealous feelings, we must begin to pray for the other person. Our petition should contain two elements. First, an offering of thanksgiving for the blessing in his or her life. And second, a request that God will place love for the individual in our hearts. Initially praying in this way will no doubt be difficult, but as love grows, and it will, you'll find the words come more easily and joyfully. Envy is inappropriate for followers of Christ since it distracts us from the Lord. We have the promise that um, if we delight in our Heavenly Father, He will give us the desires of our hearts. So we need to refocus our attention upon Him and what He is doing in our life. Guys, this is so important to realize that when we are stuck in our past and we are in those negative places, even if we don't want to be there, they are breeding more negativity. And thankfully, envy is not something that I've really had to personally deal with a lot. As a child, early in my elementary school days, um, I know I did because I was picked on and I was envious of those that were not being picked on. Um, but as, an, as I aged, um, I realized that um, I was excited for people's growth. And I also learned very early on that when we climb a, a ladder of success, it's a lonely place when you do it on your own. It's much more fun when you can take others with you. I've learned that in my writing, you know, being able to... Um, bring other people along that I know have things to share into the magazines I write for. Um, but I also think that my lack of those negative feelings is because I am striving for the positive. I'm also striving to get myself out of my past. As we progress and as we do that, these things will also leave us. Because we will be more confident in ourselves, much of our past leaves us in a state of um, not worthy, most likely in our own minds as a result of poor treatment and poor words of others. I, I had a very, very poor self-esteem as a child. I then ended up carrying that through um, 
into my adulthood because of my uh, other marriage um, and the negativity there and the words spoken there. I am very blessed to have somebody in my life that builds me up. And I, I want to be that for you guys because I know not everybody has that. Um, the people closest to me in my life, through my life, were not builders. They were breakers. And we need to be builders, not breakers. And we need to think about that. You would never want to take somebody's birthday gift away. It's no different than being envious of somebody and, take, and, and you know, taking that gift away from them. We need to thrive to get out of our past so that we can remove ourselves from any negative seeds that are there as a result. Now, one of the greatest ways that we can do that is focusing on our future, what we want out of our future. Shelly said it best, make a list. She made a list of what she wanted in a man. So did I. God blessed us both with those. We can do the same with any aspect of our life. The more we seek what we want, the more we will find it. And the more we ask for it, we will receive it. And there is so much truth in that, guys. I can't tell you. Um, and, and like I said, the, the, the things we think about are the things that we draw to ourselves. So the same applies. Like if you're sick as a result of your past and you're constantly focusing on what hurts and what's ailing you versus the good of the day, the hummingbirds flying around, you know, we have abilities to redirect our thoughts. And once we redirect our thoughts, a lot changes. Our health changes, our lives change, and we draw into our lives what we want. Now, enjoying our life is important. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, To everything there is a season, a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time to love. I want to share something with you. In that era of my life when the rug was ripped out from underneath me, it was really crazy. We talked about it earlier, how God gives us gifts of things and blessings in all kinds of unique ways. I got an email from somebody I did not know. To this day, I have no idea who it was, who they are. But it said to live like there's no tomorrow, to dance like there's nobody watching, to sing like there's nobody singing, you know, that nobody listening. And, and to live, you know, to live freely. Those words stuck with me at that time, and I, I focus on that ever since. When we live life like that, we are living life and being our true selves. At that time, let's see, I was 33, and I started doing things that I loved to do or things that I wanted to try to do and never did. Um, that was an era where I truly found myself. At 33, I was up along a river running my dog um, in, in woods I didn't know, and there was this, a tree, uh, a swing in the tree over the river. Took off my boots, took off my belt, unloaded my pockets, and in my jeans and my t-shirt, I s jumped off into that river. It was very memorable. I will never forget it. It was something very valuable to me. I slept in the woods that night with my dog. I was 10 miles away from the next, the, the ma next Macadam Road. Um, I was doing gutsy things, and it was because of that one email, that one email that prompted me to live like there's no tomorrow, and to stop allowing other people to hold me bondage, to allowing other people to dictate my life, and tell me what I am supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do because there aren't rules as to what I can do or what you can do. And, and you don't need to allow yourself to be held bondage by anyone either. So when did you last take time to laugh, to dance, and to love? Can you even remember? In the words of an unknown poet, this is the age of the half-read page, the quick hash and the mad dash. The bright night with the nerves tight, the plain hop and the brief stop, the lamp tan in a brief span, the big shot in a good spot, the brain strain and the heart pain, the cat naps until the spring snaps and the fun's done. Sobering words, right? But does it have to be that way? No. It's that way in, in your life today. Chances are it's because you made it that way. 
And you're only one, you're the only one who can make it different. You say you're busy. We're all busy. Who says you can't enjoy life even when the pace picks up? Certainly not God. Chuck Swindle writes, I refuse to force hilarity into the back seat every time responsibility takes the wheel. It's the fun, if the fun's gone, it's because we didn't want it around, not because it didn't fit. I don't care if your to-do list is as long as the horizon, you need to get back in balance and take the time to laugh, to dance, and to love. Why? Because the Bible says so. Furthermore, your family and friends will enjoy you a lot more when you do. The psalmist said, you will show me the path of life in your presence in fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures furthermore. That's Psalm 1611. So go ahead and enjoy your life the way God intended. It will be over before you know it. Okay, question. I want responses. How many of you get in your car and sing at the top of your lungs when there's nobody with you? I do that with my son too. My son and I have been caught doing some pretty funky dances while the pastor has driven past us a couple times actually, and I don't care. We're having fun. Now, the mountain man gets in the truck and we have to be, we have to behave. But on occasion, we stir that pot up too. And he's learning to uh, let his hair down, what little he has. The thing is, guys, we need to, I encourage you, I challenge you when this is over, even if it means that you have to go lock yourself in the bathroom away from the rest of your family, I want you to go in there and I want you to play a favorite song and either sing it at the top of your lungs or dance like a lunatic and just do it. And I mean hands flapping in the air and dancing like crazy. I challenge you. And when you come back out and you are laughing and smiling and feel like a different person, you don't have to thank me. It's what you need to learn to do. It's what we all need to learn to do is to move past our past, to redirect it when it comes back to haunt us because it will, trust me, it will. Um, I have haunting dreams of my family. I have haunting dreams of other things that I've experienced in my life. They come back when I'm, when I'm, you know, in a quiet spot. And you know what? I've learned to just disengage from them. I've learned to go to a pleasant place. If that particular person, there is nothing kind or, or good that I can redirect to a positive thought with that person, I think of laying on the beach and being somewhere else. We have that ability. We have that ability to redirect. And Tammy, I'm glad you do that too. I'm not the only one. And I do that here when the house is empty. I love it. When they're not here and they're working, I have my radio cranked. Um, we just, we need to learn to have fun. We need to be more spontaneous. We need to do things. You know, how many of you, if you saw that rope swing along a river in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody around, would you, would you have gotten on it and went swimming? I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did the things I did to nurture my soul. I'm glad I did those things to move past where I was in life. Uh, bear with me a second here. My battery is dying on my phone now. It's because I'm talking too much. There we go. Hopefully that just went on. There we go. Okay. So take these little tidbits and these tips and try to progress in your life. If you're stuck in the past, and I do believe that all of us are to some degree, whether it's hurts, whether it's things we wish we would have done different, you can't woulda, coulda, shoulda. You gotta move on. And if there's something you wish you would have done then, if you can, do it now. <laughs> Diane said, I'm not sure I would have. I hope I would. <laughs> well, what I wanna Fire in you and encourage in you guys is moving forward when you have such opportunities. My jeans dried, my t-shirt dried, and I wasn't walking around in sloppy shoes because I sat there for a while and tried to dry off. But, but live, live spontaneously. So much we get stuck in the, in the spot of abundance and clutter. And they hold us hostage and we have opportunities to go do things and we second guess ourselves. Or we, no, I don't think I want to go. Or how many of you make plans to go do something and then you change your mind when it comes time to go do it? We're good at that because we're homebodies and we, we hate going out. 
But the other day after the realtor was here, he, the mountain man ran out and he was getting ready to go to the store. And I went upstairs and I was like kicking myself that I didn't go with him. Just, you know, the day was kind of shot. It was hard to get in the groove of anything that I had to do work-wise because I knew that uh, by the time I got started, I'd have to make supper. And God knew my thoughts. God knew my desires. And instead of him pooling, he had to go get his truck up the, up the street where he was working because he kept it there so it was out of the way when the realtor came. And instead of him just going from there and leaving, he came back here. And I don't even remember why he came back. But he ended up beeping the horn at the cats because the cat wouldn't get out of the way. And I was like, you know what? I'm not missing my opportunity. And I ran down and I went with him. We need to do that more. I am talking to myself right now too. Because as we become adults, as we become parents, as we become whatever we become, we feel our obligation to do things instead of doing what's fun and we need to learn to live. And he and I are learning more and more as we are walking out this situation that our future is going to be a lot more fun. Um, we've been focusing so hard on working on this house and to get it sold and we've lost our ability to be spontaneous and to have fun at times and we have brought that back a lot now that the clutter is gone. and and now that it's listed. So, you know, as we remove the weights of our past, the weights of our thoughts, the weights of our clutter, there is a freedom to be found, guys, and I want to encourage that, you know, for you because there's there's a lot that we're missing out on and I know I'm not the only one. So, I'm going to end there today. Um, I want to encourage you, please go find a spot out in the woods, in a bathroom, whatever and, and just blare your favorite tune and just dance and sing and do whatever you feel like doing. Enjoy your life. Get a smile on your face. It's amazing what will put that bold smile back on our faces. We just need to live. I've been texting with a chiropractor. I have an interview this Tuesday afternoon. Yes! Awesome girl. That is so cool. I, I can see you sitting there and I believe that you will be sitting in your new seat and working that job. I believe that because I know God is going to work that out for you. That is fantastic. Awesome girl. Congrats. So that is that is something you guys can all be praying for for Diana. And like I said, if you guys have prayers, please don't hesitate to let us know that you you need them because so many on here will be praying for you, not just me. The mountain man will be praying for you and we have so many amazing prayer warriors. So if you're struggling being stuck in the past and you need help, don't, don't try to do it on your own. The first resource I always go to is God. He listens better than anybody. And um, it should be our first go-to. But when you're stuck and you're having struggles and you can't get to the next level on your own, please don't stay there. There's so many people that want to help you. There's helplines for that if you don't feel comfortable reaching out to me. But even talk to your pastors. Um, but there's life on the other side of all of this baggage and all of this stuff. So please seek that because when you get rid of all of that baggage and all of that stuff and you start moving and living in today and living in tomorrow, and truthfully, guys, the best way to live is to live in today. I don't focus on what tomorrow is going to bring. I, I pray about what I would like for tomorrow and for God to guide me, but I live in today. And living in today is so wholesome. It allows me to be so productive and it leaves me, leaves me living spontaneously. Even if that means that my spontaneity causes me to lose a dog, it's still part of the adventure. Live life, guys. Live life and live in your today. Get out of your past. All right, I'm going to say a prayer for us. Papa, I just thank you for the blessings of the words that you give me and the content to teach. And I pray that your words through me are helping people out there to thrive and to live life and to move past the things that are holding most of society back. And to enable us to live freely in ourselves, be who we are, be proud of who we are, be happy with who we are, have strong thoughts and feelings of who we are in ourselves and speak nicely to ourselves. 
And through doing all of that, we are going to nurture others in our lives, whether it's through them watching us walk out life or whether it's, you know, through our happiness and what we pay forward. But whatever it is, I just ask that you be with each and every one that's watching this, whether live or after the fact, and just nurture their souls. Allow them to be free to be who they are. Help them to move past their past hurts and their past bondage. Help them to realize that they have full control and that they have the key and allow them to remove the locks and the chains and to live life and help them to feel the courage to reach out to you to seek that and to seek the help in that. And Lord, I just ask that you bless everybody present. Just give them a feeling of peace and comfort and uh, just bless them greatly and, and help them with whatever struggles and needs they may have. And I ask that you be with our prayer list, Lord. There are so many hurting people. Be with Pat, be with Roger, be with um, Terry and, and June, and, and be with Chad, and, and be with uh, Candy and Steve Hill, and be with Mark. And, and Lord, just be with all of those on our list, and Nita, and Riley, and Tristan, and, and Tammy and her family, and Shelly and her family, and Diana and her family, and... And, and with Charles and Lord, I just ask that you nurture all of them and just help them to grow in you, help them th for their faith to grow in you and let them see your presence, feel your presence and see your blessings and, and the light of your gracious gifts to us every day. Be with Ashley too, as she's uh, on her up and down roller coaster, but just um, thank you Lord for each and every one of these people that are such a blessing in my life. I thank you for blessing with them and for the richness that you've added to my life. And I just ask that whatever your plan is for each of us moving forward, that we see the beauty in that and we are able to live in the today. Thank you for what you're gonna do more than anything. And I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Okay, guys, ah, what an awesome day. It's an awesome day. Wherever you are, make it an awesome day. Go dance in your bathroom, dance in your bedroom, and, and just be you, and, and learn to work through the things that are holding you back. Because we all deserve happiness, we all deserve an amazing future, and it is all there and available to you just like it is for me. You know, we all walk the hard, we all go through hard things, we all go through ups and downs, sometimes it's daily, sometimes it's, you know, multiple things throughout a day, sometimes it's spread out. But whatever it is, whatever you're walking out, lean on God, hold on tight, but remember to live your life, live your life, be happy, take time for you, and find a balance. I know it's hard, but the more you learn to live spontaneously and happily and get out of your past and get out of your head, you'll find all those things you're looking for. So guys, have a fantastic, fabulous day. Rest of your weekend as well because today's Friday. I will see you next Wednesday on our normal 1030 Pacific Standard Time. Until then, you guys take care. I love you all and may God bless you each and God bless you.